This is a very active sewing YouTube channel. So of course, in the year 2023, you've seen a lot of sewing here and it's almost the end of the year. Happy times to do a fun roundup. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from LiftingPinsAndNeedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing, and it's almost the end of the year. Every single year, I take my time to prepare a fun roundup of all the make that have happened in the year. I've been doing this since I pretty much started the channel, so it's a yearly event and I do prepare for it during the whole year. I've been offering to you this roundup in a playlist with episodes instead of doing one whole episode because it would end up being hours and hours long i'm doing it separated into tops bottoms toppers and dresses those are the categories as a disclaimer this is not a hobby youtube channel this is actually my job my full-time occupation and i have a goal of teaching a lot of sewing as well so i am presenting a lot of sewing content for you that results in a lot of garments usually they are made for myself it's usually more than what a regular person that sews would sew up in a year and i'm really really happy to have a job that lets me have all these wonderful garments so don't judge me this is a disclaimer it's my job it's what i do for a living as a little summary you'll see a little chart here i've separated each of the garment types into how many i made this year i have 37 boxes bottoms 14 dresses 37 toppers and 44 tops and that's a grand total of 132 makes in the year 2023 a little under 2022 which i believe was 137 i'm sort of aiming every year to reduce the amount of garments i make i just can't seem to be able to do it today we are going to see the toppers by toppers i mean anything that goes on top of another thing this could be a jacket could be a cape could be a coat a hoodie, a sweater, anything like that. This is all inspiration for you, so you're welcome to have a little paper there and jot down what you like. Everything is on the screen. All the information I find that's helpful for you will be there, the name of the pattern, the line art, as well as for a few seconds in each scene, you'll see what I'm styling it with. So in this case, because we're seeing toppers, you'll see lots of bottoms, skirts and pants. I've also made a playlist with all the 37 makes so that it's easy for you to find. And before hopping into this big episode, I wanted to let you know about two sales that are happening at the end of the year. The first one is Pattern Emporium. They are running their once a year 30% off site-wide sale. This only happens once. Usually during the year when there's a pattern release, there are smaller, shorter sales that are 15% off. This time it's 30%, so it's a really good discount for the whole website. That's already happening. When you go onto the Pattern Emporium website, on the top you'll see the countdown, how many more days and hours you have left of the sale. And I believe it runs through the 1st of January, but this is Australian Eastern Standard Time, so it'll be the 31st over here on this part of the world. No code needed. I really enjoyed all my makes. I'll leave you a playlist of Pattern Emporium so you can get some inspiration and grab your favorites for the lowest price you ever find. The other sale that's going on is with Sinclair Patterns. There's a buy one, get one free sale also through the 1st of January. You put two patterns in your cart, you pay for one, one offer per client. And I'll also leave you a playlist of my Sinclair pattern makes. I think this year I've sewn about 14 or 15 of their patterns, so it's been a pretty busy year. <laughs> Remember the links are always in the description box and in the pinned comment. If you use my affiliate link, you don't pay any extra. It's just that part of that sale comes back to me as commission and it supports the work that I do here. So without further ado, let's hop into seeing 37 toppers. This is my Nazare hoodie from Itch to Stitch. I used a really cool print, Ponty Roma, that looks like a wool boucle. And this is a really cool design that has diagonal features. They're not just for being pretty, but there's also a buster incorporated into this. So these seams actually give you shaping for the bust, which I think is amazing. I have the full bust option here, fully zipped up. It has a hoodie and a hemband, some cuffs there on the sleeves. Here you can see those diagonal seams on the front. And on one of these diagonal seams, you have these cool inseam pockets. And it's a really nice fit, it's not oversized. You can see that the fit at the hips is just right. Here you can see my hood, I interlined it, so that's why it looks black, because the inside of my pont is white. The finish inside, covering the zipper tape with twill tape is really cool, super professional looking, very, very neat. I love techniques like that. And it's a really nice hood, 
board it's got a nice shape it's not too big it's not too small and it's gonna be perfect for in between weather and I really love this one I think it looks a little bit like a dressed up hoodie just because I was fortunate to find such an amazing print like this that looks like boucle when it's actually not this is my magenta color Stacy jacket from style art to compensate for not having that waistband there at the hem I just added a little bit of length to the jacket to end up with sort of the original length I've got it over my neat Luna dress from Love Notions matching handbag I think the fit of this jacket is really good because there's a lot of pattern pieces here that give shaping on the front and the back it is possible to wear this clothes it is a fitted jacket I would rather wear it open I really like this length long sleeves and this cuff is achieved by a really deep hem allowance that's all the collar is super easy to sew and there are fake pocket flaps there so no real pocket at the back there's a yoke sort of squashed by my handbag though and some seams that incorporate darts at the back so fit is really really good there you could button this all the way up but I never will I really love this type of jacket style it's like a denim type of jacket but not in denim and it's not boxy I really love it in this linen fabric it's one of my faves and I've worn it a lot here is my Stacy jacket over another dress. Now I didn't plan it, but this flossom dress from Pattern Emporium has the exact tone of magenta in the print there. And I think it goes really well. So I think this is a great option for a type of color that is sort of harder to style. Here you can see it fully buttoned up. I would never wear it like that. Another look at the yoke. And I got a closer look at the seams at the front and the fake pocket flap. All these things are easy to sew. There's a lot of top stitching, but it's a lot of fun. I think the sleeve and shoulder feet is really, really good. And I just love how this looks, the printed bold dress underneath this jacket. I think it's an outfit that sort of would stand out and I'm not mad about that. <laughs> This is my Coda jacket. I made it in a super interesting fabric that looks like a quilted fabric, but it's not. It's just a cotton waffle type material. I made my jacket a little longer to match my height. I've got it in a single layer and I've got navy binding all the way around. One extra thing I added to mine was add a little dart. I did a full bust adjustment. You can barely tell though, because there's a print there. I really like how those corners turned out with the binding. That was a fun technique. You can see how to do that on my channel. On the side, you have a super easy to sew pattern pocket and I bound the top of the pocket just so it can contrast. I also did a special technique there on the side seam because it's a really curved hem and I have a type of V binding there. Super fun to do, super neat inside and outside. It reaches the mid hip as intended but I needed to add two and a half inches to the length to achieve that for my height. You can have a simple neckline that's rounded. You can also sew a collar as an option and that's what I did. It's finished really neatly on both sides with the bias tape and I think it's super easy. Here is a look at the back simple collar folded back very nice I think the shoulder and sleeve fit is really good and here's an even closer look at the binding that finishes this collar the collar is sewn after the neckline is finished with the binding so that's how you get such a neat finish there I'm very happy with mine now I'm excited to make a more winter one with maybe a wool suiting this is a lighter jacket to match my weather over here that's really hot I love how it looks really casual classic love the fit yeah I'm really happy with mine this is the sherry top and dress from Fabio of four patterns I've used a really drapey sweater knit and used the long sleeve option I really like that side tie feature and I love the print here and I think this side tie looks great on everyone it gives you a really nice drape on the front and the back on one side and I think it's amazing I've made this as a dress before really light material for summer now I have something warmer here up closer you can see this side tie believe it or not it's super easy to sew I already have a video on the channel showing you how to sew that it's extremely easy easier than you think and it looks amazing I really love this I love it as a dress and now I love it as a sweater and I can also have a version for the cold weather I really love the look the neckline is super easy there's a neckband under there the long sleeves are super easy to sew it's just a dolman style and then there's an extra sleeve piece I'm so glad I was able to revisit this pattern because I really loved it when I sewed it last time now for winter it's amazing I really love it Here is my nail cape from Style Arc. This is a size 16. I didn't make any fitting adjustments. It's got inseam pockets on the front and it's a super cool cape. All the edges are finished with bias binding and there's a box pleat at the back. I think the length is really appropriate and I've got it styled here over a skirt and a black top. Very simple. I really like the freedom that a cape gives your arms where you can just 
take them out and it's sewn there partially it's like a sleeve but an open sleeve there is an armhole in there as you can see and the construction was quite interesting let me tell you you can see that the sleeve is sewn onto a seam at the back the inseam pockets are really little there's not much space and I could have put some type of closure but I just left it there is a little stand-up collar. Everything's finished with bias binding. There's facings inside. I think the shoulder and sleeve fit is super good. The pattern is really well made. Everything matches and the fit is great. For sewing, it did take quite a while to do all the binding, but I think it was worth it. You also see it styled a little bit more casual. Here is the same cape again, styled with pants. A bit more appropriate for winter. I do have a long sleeve top underneath and you can see the color of that top. My arms can come out. I really love how streamlined this cape is. That box pleat gives you a little bit extra ease around the hips. Everything inside is bound and yeah, it took a little while to make but it's very, very neat inside. It's just super interesting and I really like the style because it's not too voluminous. I need to press mine a little better. It's a single layer, it's not lined and I think the fit is really good at the shoulders and the sleeves. The collar has two layers and you can see that the sleeve is sewn only partially. I think the collar was super easy to sew and there's facings to finish it off on the edges. There's facings inside but you still finish all the edges with bias tape. All very neat. I really love it. I love that I could dress it up and down. It can be really casual and I'd wanted a cape for so long. I'm so happy I finally have it. <laughs> this is my Coimbra wrap top from Itch to Stitch. It's for colder weather because I used a lightweight sweater knit. I think having a sweater like this is great because not only are you nice and warm but the fit is just amazing not oversized like regular sweaters i sewed a size 14 with a full bust option that one has a dart and i blended out to a 16 on the hip i added one and a half inches to the length at the hip area and one extra inch to the length of the sleeve this is a real wrap top and i've got it paired over my castle point skirt from the so beautiful book here you can see the ties you can see that the tie comes out of the right side seam and going around the waist it is a fitted design so you have less than an inch of room around the hip that's why you have a neat fabric Mitered corners finish there. Here's a buster that I think is amazing fit for the full bust option. I like where the wrap hits on my chest. I think it's not too high, not too low, it's just right. The neckline is finished with a facing inside and there's an optional collar which I added on here. I really love the fit. I think it's amazing. I'm gonna love wearing this when it gets cooler. I really love it. This is my third version of the Lincoln top. I made it in a navy blue sweater knit. It's very drapey, lighter weight than the other sweater knit. I still have the extra three inches added in two separate areas and I have the long sleeves on this one. Here you can see that because it's a drapey fabric, you'll see a few diagonal lines that are typical from just the lack of a dart, but you won't really see a dart in most knit projects, especially with this one that has the plackets on the side. I really love the contrast buttons. I have the last one undone. I hacked the square neckline from the Salt Whistle Peplum I think it's amazing. I've always loved square necklines and it was really easy to match these two patterns. I have a facing, it's top stitched, the facing is interfaced and it's super neat. Here is a closer look. I took great care to hand base that down before top stitching so that it's super flat. You can see that the shoulder seam is slightly dropped have a long sleeve there. I added an inch extra to the length. Navy is a staple color for me. I love it. This knit is so, so, so soft. This is the second Lincoln I've made and I made it as a sleeveless sweater vest. It is a sweater knit and I love this print. I think this is a really fun sew with that diagonal button placket. This is sleeveless and I've modified the neckline to be a V as you can see there. I added my own V neckband. I used rib knit for that and I used it also on the armholes. I really love the gray and the black. I think this is a classic print and I'm glad I had a tiny piece of fabric where I was able to make this. This one looks a little bit more fitted because I do have a layer underneath. I would usually wear this on its own. I have the last button there undone and I didn't really sew the button holes. I just sewed the buttons right through the placket. I think it's really fun to put together and it's an original design so I really enjoyed it. Here's the same Lincoln only without the top underneath so I think this shows the real fit because this is not meant to be worn with something underneath. This is a size extra large. I've added three inches extra to the length but I've added them in two separate sections so to not deform the diagonal pieces. I know I'm gonna wear it sleeveless like this also because the sweater knit isn't too thick or too hot. This is my first Chloe top from Sinclair Patterns. This is my winter version in a red sweater knit. It's so nice. It's a light to medium weight sweater knit and it has the right amount of drape I think. 
I've paired it here with my black and white poppy pants, also from Sinclair Patterns. For this one, I've used the second cut line, so it hits my full hip, but it doesn't cover it, so there is a longer version available. I think that this is okay. I would actually shorten it a little bit. I've got the long sleeves, and the sweater knit is amazing. The cow neckline doesn't sit high, it doesn't sit low, it sits just right, and the pleats were easy to manage and easy to sew with this fabric. I think it's gonna be perfect, and I can't wait to wear this amazing sweater when the weather gets cold. But no worries, you can make the pattern in any type of fabric. I do have some summer ones to show as well, but this winter one is just so nice, so amazing. It's not boxy, it's not basic. It's just so gorgeous, so beautiful. This is a size 16, tall file. I love this color so much. This is my Cambria top slash jacket. I did use this pattern, but transformed it a little bit. I've got an amazing pink ponty here. I've added quite a bit of seams. I've taken that bust that, that the full bust option has and transformed it into princess seams that you'll see up closer. And I've got the pleated sleeve option. I really like how this turned out. I like this length. I finished the insides with a facing. I've got a rounded collar option, finished neatly with a facing inside that has been top stitched. And I love this sleeve. It just makes this jacket a little bit dramatic, you know, a little bit striking. Love it so much. To get the length of my sleeves, I had to piece it and it ended up looking like a cuff and I've got a hem facing inside and I really like the amount of ease in this one and I did take the waist in in all of these seams to give myself some custom shaping and I love it as a topper it's going to go over so many of my print makes and I'm so happy colorful Karina yeah I couldn't be happier here is my Cambria top slash jacket that I made in a Ponte Roma hacked it into an open situation there with facings. I've got it here over my black flare leggings, very simple pants, super comfy and a colorful top. This is how I'd go to the mall, just somewhere more casual. And I really like the vibe here with the pink. I like how straight this hangs and that's just due to the bust shaping and having the correct cup size. I really, really love that. The shaping I was able to achieve with all of these extra little seams. And I love how that sleeve looks. Like there's a cuff, but it's not, it's just pieced and I've top stitched it intentionally. I hemmed it with a hem facing just because I didn't have more length there on my sleeve and I'm just so happy with this. It was a dream come true. I've been thinking this idea up for such a long time. I'm super happy I'm able to have a really comfy top, comfy sleeves, all stretchy and ponty. Pink can't go wrong. At least for me, I really love this color on myself. Here's a closer look at the neckline and the facing inside. It's super neat, top stitched and the princess seams coming from the shoulders right there that give all the bust shaping. My pleated sleeve cap. I love taking a pattern and just just transforming it into something else. Although deep down it is the same pattern, just made in a different way, in this case with more seams and the bust that taken somewhere else. This was mega enjoyable. This is my first Zakopane top and I made it with a sweater knit. The solid color really lets you see the twist on the neckline and I think it's really pretty. I've got simple styling with a skirt and some matching accessories. You'll see the details up closer, like that center front seam that you get after twisting one of these sides. For fitting adjustments, all I did was add one and a half inches to the top at the lower length and shorten line and I also added an inch to the sleeves. This sweater knee is a little more loosely woven, has only 5% spandex so it does look like it's got a bit more room than it actually has because the fabric has less recovery than other types of knits. I think the neckline depth is as low as I would wear it but I'm happy I'm not showing anything. <laughs> I think the twist is subtle and pretty. It's amazingly easy to sew up and the top looks more complex than it is for sure. There you can see a closer look at the twist in the neckline. It's finished really neatly with a binding inside. Pretty striking in my opinion. This is a size 14 full bust option and then blended out to a 16 at the hips. I'm really happy I have a winter version but I've also made a summer version with the same pattern. This is the same pink Zakopane top, but with my upland trousers, also from each to stitch. They're in the same color scheme. I really like the purple with the pink. I like the length of this top with the pants. I think it's a really nice casual outfit, but also a bit dressed up. I've got a scarf with a print to give it some life and a matching handbag. Can't wait to wear this out and I feel amazing in these colors. And this sweater, yeah, it's just so cute. This is my modified ballet blouse. I didn't make it into a blouse. I have it fully opened. I don't have any closures. I use red linen and I made quite a few changes that you see up close. 
but it's basically meant to go over garments like a little cover up you can see as i'm walking away the drawstring on the back at the waist to give it some shaping i also added some patch pockets on the front i had a lot of fun with it and i've got it styled over a dress this is how i would wear this for sure and i really love the look here closer you can see the drawstring i did place that at the positioning of my waist it is catching the top of that patch pocket that is also in the side seam the pocket is for decoration purposes basically at the shoulder you see a little shirt panel that is one of the options of the ballad blouse and i opted to do a sleeveless version and everywhere on the edges it's finished with bias tape i didn't do the exposed facing because this is a more casual style you can see up closer where the self binding is i don't mean to put buttons or anything so i didn't really think i needed to do the facing it doesn't really change the shape of the blouse at all it's the same finished width everywhere and at the back, instead of gathering into the yoke, I have pin tucks. That's a super fun hack and I really love the look of that and I think linen shows it off beautifully. I love that I can adjust the waist and just give myself some shaping here. As a little jacket as such, I would like that shaping and I think it looks very beautiful at the back with all the gathering. Love it. Here is the same modified ballet blouse but as a little top back cover up. This time over my legato jeans and a basic black cami. It's a pretty basic outfit but I think the little top addresses it up beautifully and I love it. There you can see it up closer, the drawstring, how it brings it in all at the waist and gives it some shaping. Beautiful at the back. I really love it. <laughs> I'm so happy I was able to make it. And these are the projects I enjoy the most where I can take a pattern I've already made and just change a few things, tweak a few little details and get something very different but also sort of the same. <laughs> love that. This is the fifth time I make a willow wrap top from Love Notions. This is a size extra large with a standard bust option. But this is the first time I've made it for in between, you know, weather, spring, autumn. And I used an amazing sweater knit. I've used the long sleeves and I've got the original length of the peplum here. This can also be a dress and I've made several dresses in the past. But look up close the details of this print. It's so amazing. The bodice hits my waist at the front and the back. And I think this is a style that can suit a lot of people. I really love how this fits i make all my length adjustments at the bust height that's where i add length and to highlight the wrap over bodice detail i used exposed binding in a contrast navy so that you can see it i also used that at the bottom of my sleeves and i think it looks really really nice when you wrap both front pieces you can choose how deep you want this crossover to be and because this is for cooler weather i've chosen the higher one sometimes if you do a wrap over style in a print it just gets lost in the print and it looks like you're just wearing a regular v that's not happening here because of the contrast binding that is visible i think you can make this as a sweater a more dressed up one that fits really well you know not all sweaters have to be boxy and loose and i really enjoyed making this one this is a pattern that i really can't stop making because it's just so lovely it fits amazing i just feel great in it it's just the best sweater ever really love it this is a tustin top it's not a top originally in the pattern it's a dress but it's as easy as making it shorter i really wanted to have a sweater with this design there's no reason why you just can't make a dress shorter and I used a green sweater knit you'll see it up closer and I've got a sort of green monochromatic look with a colorful purse here I really like it as a sweater there's no reason why you can't use a knit like this I think the tie drapes amazingly underneath here I've got just a light cami this is a sweater after all so I'm gonna wear something underneath it's got all the same features of the dress even the basta and I think the fit is really good mine is a size 14 with a full bust option blended to a 16 waist and 16 hips and i'm ready for autumn this could work for spring as well and i really like that neckline is a little higher and to make it a little more special instead of the neckband i added exposed binding with a matching green leather look jersey just to give it a little extra detail and i really enjoyed doing that i think it looks really neat i've got the same at the bottom of the hem for the sleeves i do like my sleeves nice and long i really like how this looks over pants it would be great over a skirt as well i love the color and the style yeah it's just perfect if you've already made a dress it's so easy to just put the dress on and put some pins where you'd like the hem to 
to be and then measure how much you want to take out from the hem and that's it easy peasy and you can have a tassel and top as well this is my joy jacket from chalk and notch i've got a super colorful cotton lawn inside as lining my main fabric is a rayon linen blend i chose the hoodie option you can also do a collar if you want to and it's a really nice jacket with nice details super wearable you'll see the details up closer size 16 blended to 18 at the hips at the hem you can do a channel with a drawstring that's optional i've got grommets there you can leave that out if you want to i didn't modify the length of the jacket so this is the original length and i like it there here you can see my angled pocket opening for this patch pocket you can also sew a rectangle patch pocket if you want i really like this hood it's really nice everything's really really neat the zipper insertion the hood is a three-piece hood that fits really well fully lined as well and i think the raglan sleeves fit super well and are super comfortable the shoulder shape on the top is perfect with that seam down the middle of the arm i know i'm gonna really enjoy this one it's a lovely color i'm gonna have it for years to come and i'm really glad i made it after having the pattern for so long this is my second armador top from each to stitch this time in a sweater knee and i had a lot of fun figuring out print placement there so it made sense i have the original three quarter length sleeve and no adjustments of length from the bottom pieces but i did shorten my bodice and up closer you can see that it is a fairly fitted top there's not much ease at the hips at all and that curved seam goes right underneath the bust i had to shorten the bodice to achieve that i think that is personal fitting that is going to be different for everyone i love that it's not boxy that it comes in at the waist and i love this mid hip length i think this looks great with a pencil skirt like this one this is a quebec skirt from each to stitch and the depth of the neckline is really good i think it's helped that it's stabilized before sewing on the binding so there's no stretch there it's not going to stag and go lower as you wear it here you can see a closer look at the details there is a back seam right there now i am going to add a sleeve extension there you'll see in a little bit and overall i think the design is super unique i am going to add a sleeve extension here as a hack to just make this sweater knit full length you'll see that next and also a different look a bit more informal <laughs> not a skirt so yeah you'll see that next here is the same amador top in the sweater knit that you just saw i think the wide leg pants suits the look also because the top is fitted it's not boxy it's not long so having something wide on the bottom i think balances out the look this time i added my own sleeve extension it is shaped it's not a rectangle you can see how to do that on my channel and then you can just have a full length sleeve if that's what you like i think that was nice for the sweater knit and i love that this top can be whatever you want it to be you can style it so many ways i think styling is so much fun i enjoy it a lot and i love taking a garment and making it look a little dressier or a little bit more informal it's one of the best things this is my smitten jacket from pattern emporium i've chosen the cropped length for the tall person in the file there is an ultra crop which would reach the natural waist this one's a little below the natural waist i have the elasticized hem band the wider sleeve with the elasticized cuff as well mine is a straight size 18 no fitting adjustments other than adding one inch to the length of the sleeve just to allow the blousing there over that elasticized cuff to lean and rayon blend i think the perfect fabric for it because it's medium weight but also has a bit of drape from the rayon up closer you can see the ease all that elastic is bringing it in i think this option suits me better you can also sew the band without the elastic but i thought this was good for me i really like this type of sleeve it's different in this type of jacket so i wanted to try different features the length of this jacket is perfect to wear over a dress that has a bit more volume in the skirt and this is one of my heartstring dresses from pattern emporium and it's just so comfortable and easy to wear believe me the sewing was not hard i really love the way there's a little bit of blousing over that elasticized hem band this collar technique is so easy to sew you can see how to do that on my channel i've chosen really nice buttons and you can see my sleeve up closer there's a yoke seam at the back and the panels so nice and i've only done the pocket flaps as decoration I've sewn the button right through, they're loose. I don't have the pockets, although you can put a patch pocket there. I think this is the perfect length for me. I don't think I can pull off a shorter jacket because of my proportions. And on me at least, I'm happy that this is quite even at the front and the back and the front is not shorter. So I'm really happy with the fit. I think the sewing was really, really fun. This color green, goes really well with black and white. That's why I love black and white dresses because you can put any color on top.
Securities over another fit and flare dress that I have. This one has a lot of colors and there is some green in there. I decided to bring that green out with the jacket and the matching shoes and bag. I think this is one of the few dresses that has a green print. This is a color that I need to build on in my <laughs> sewing. This is a nice colorful outfit I would be happy to wear. This skirt is fuller than the heart strings dress. I wouldn't want to wear a jacket that's longer with this style of dress, so it's perfect. Solved the problem, I didn't really have anything to put on top of this dress because of the feet and flare style and the fuller skirt. Love this look. Then I have my woven palazzo pants from Pattern Emporium. These have the green color there in the print. I really love these pants and this is just another look. I have a tight fitting black top underneath, just tucked into my pants and the jacket on top. I really love it. This is my style of wearing a maxi skirt look without it being a maxi, because I don't wear maxi skirts. These pants are so wide and flowy and I think the length of the jacket is perfect for a wide style of pant. Here is another wide leg pant look, but this is a knit, it's an ITY. These are the knit palazzo pants from Pattern Emporium. Super wide leg, super mega wide. I love it. It looks like I'm wearing a maxi skirt, but they pants. So comfortable, same fitted black top underneath, my smitten jacket on top. Really love these, so comfortable. I've got to make myself some more wide leg pants. I really love them, so comfortable to wear. This is my Dorothy blazer from Stout Arc. I sewed a size 16, I used a linen rayon blend, red color, love it. I love this design, how clean the neckline is. It's really streamlined, it's like a deep V and you have a single button there. The front is slanted outwards in an angle, longer in the front, shorter in the back. I really love how clean that is the sleeves are two-piece sleeves I think the shoulders fit well it is a slim fit design you can't fit a lot of layers underneath it you can see my single button up close I did do a full bust adjustment to add one cup size extra from a B to a C and did some customized shaping there on all these seams you have princess seams on the back as well it's finished with facings inside overall it's an easy jacket to sew I think what could take a little longer is just getting the feet customized to yourself once that's done it was really really enjoyable I've styled it over my Sunday romper from Love Notions and I actually made it to match this jacket because I knew the colors were going to be just right. I'm really happy with my red jacket. Here I have it over my Legado jeans and I think this blazer could be worn many many ways and it's going to be a staple for me. I wanted to have a red blazer like this for such a long time and I'm really happy I got to sew it. This is the second Coda jacket that I made. It's the exact same pattern piece, the same fit. I just made it in a different way. I used a wool suiting, wool blend actually. All the pieces are fully interfaced. This one is lined. I've got some satin lining inside. And up closer you'll see the details. There was quite a bit of handwork going on there. And I'm really happy with how it turned out. It's exactly like I had envisioned it. The weave of this fabric is black and white so it's gonna go with a lot of things I have the pockets on the side as per the original design but I did add my own chest pockets and flaps there and here you can see this beautiful fabric I found some really nice trim and I've sewn that by hand all the way around the jacket on the flaps everywhere that pocket flap is interfaced every single piece of this jacket is interfaced actually every single thing so I use quite a bit of interfacing for it the buttonholes you can't really see them that much because of the fabric they just sort of sink in there they're super neat I have really nice buttons I think it looks really good here is a closer look at the neckline I just use the simple neckline option you know you can sew on a collar here or a hood but that was not my vision for this jacket and it's low enough that you can wear a little scarf maybe a blouse with a collar on top i have the trim on the end of the sleeve as well the lining is the same type of material that was used for the binding around the jacket but that's hidden underneath of the trim and it's just so nice i just can't wait to wear this out a bunch of times i've just got them here with my legato jeans but there are many more ways i could style this jacket 
it's a, basically a dream jacket for me to have i'd wanted to make something like this for a long time a bit of a designer inspired jacket but made by me and all the hours it took to make it are totally worth it super comfortable nice and roomy so nice love it here you can see it on buttoned up if i want to do that i'll probably wear it open all the time this is easier to do than what you think it's just the trim that took so much time to sew on by hand this is my summery queen cardigan this is a pattern from five out of four patterns got a ton of options and from far away you won't see the details beige is very hard to film and photograph i'm wearing it on its own I've got it fully buttoned up except for the top buttons and up close you can see the details of the fabric it's a really nice sweater knit my button placket is made out of woven I used linen here there are optional patch pockets on the hips but I made my pockets smaller and I sewed them on the chest I made my own little pocket flap with the same linen I used for the button placket and I think this style of button pairs really well with the style of the cardigan I've just paid it over navy pants here with some snake print accessories the only way I feel good in a snake print is if the outfit is quite toned down which I think this one is because it's summery I made the short sleeve version and I've got a little cuff there on the sleeve there's a hem band at the bottom as well which is an option and this is two inches shorter than the original length mine is a size extra large with a regular bust option for the front piece and the details are just pretty just delicate I really love it here is the same queen cardigan but this time worn open and I'm just wearing it over some wide leg pants I've got a simple black cami underneath and a little scarf very neutral accessories there with handbag and the shoes the outfit is super comfortable the cardigan feels amazing over the cami it's just a great little layer and there are so many other ways I could have shown you this I just decided to use very simple styling here to just let the details of this special cardigan shine I really love it Here is my winter queen cardigan. I don't usually wear plaid, but I love this classic color combination. I've got the details of the bands, the cuffs, and the button placket collar in a black stretch velvet, which I think is really pretty. I think with a plaid, I would prefer these details in a solid, otherwise it's it just gets really hard to match up the stripes and make it look neat mine is a size extra large with a regular bust option for the front piece i've got big buttons there i was able to match up the stripes on the side which makes me really happy this cardigan is also two inches shorter than the original length i like the beige the black and the little bit of red in there the fabric is giving me a bit of Burberry-esque vibes. It's a great little piece I'll have to feel cozy and put together. I really love this. I love it so much. The sewing was so fun. I really like this option of the Queen Cardigan, although there's other options in the pattern. This was the one that won me over. And I know I can make many styles. It just depends on the fabric that you use. You can get many looks with this pattern. Just the right amount of ease. It's not oversized. It's not fitted. It's not boxy. Is just right this is my Juliet top I made it with a really light sweater knit nice and drapey perfect for spring or autumn in between weather and I love this print I think it's really pretty I saw a size extra large with a regular bust I have long sleeves here and all I did for fitting was add one inch of extra length just because I'm a little bit tall I like the length where it hits it's sort of almost at my full hip it doesn't cover my bottom here on the top you can see the yoke it's harder to see the details I can see them very clearly there is a fake placket with Buttons, little pin tucks the back is simple it's just cut on the fold and underneath the yoke you have a piece with slight gathering there I think the sweater knit was perfect because it's drapey enough to take those gathers very well without turning out bulky those details on the front are optional you can also sew a plain yoke and I have a long sleeve I think the fit is really good a normal type of sleeve paired over jeans here very very casual and I love the pairing of burgundy with blue or navy so that's how I put this little outfit together here is the same burgundy top and I have ready to wear burgundy pants. I wish I could make my own, I just can't find the right fabric. But this is a more dressed up look with pointy sling back heels, block heels so they're really comfy to walk in. The color in this sweater, there's not many colors I can pair it to other than navy and burgundy, maybe even black. I love the style, it's so pretty, it's so soft, it feels amazing on. I love all that ease, it's so comfortable to wear and I love the little details on the upper chest. I think the gathers below the yoke on the front are really discreet. I think they're gonna suit everyone and you're just gonna reach for this one because it's just so easy to wear, comfy cup. And that's what we want.
Here is my second Chasing Butterflies and this one's more for cooler weather because I've got a really light sweater knit. I love the print here and I love the denim skirt that brings the blue out of the print in the sweater knit. Look at my blue sneakers, aren't they cool? <laughs> I love them. This is a really wearable outfit for me and I could be super comfortable and feel really good. This skirt has a semi-fitted silhouette and it goes really well with the Chasing Butterflies top. I think you should keep the fabric drapey. that's why I chose this sweater knit because it's super dry and the blousing you get on the sides is not going to stick away. I've got a full length sleeve here with the little cuffs as you can see. Those were fun to sew. And on the top I have my lower neckline with rib knit there for the neckband and it was a super nice insertion. I made my rib knit neckband an inch shorter than the pattern just because I know rib knit works like that. Love the color combo here with the gray tones and the blues. It's just beautiful. I love these colors. Of course I had to bring my long sleigh or day skirt. In this case I have more dressy boots. These are block heel, leather, pointy, very classic ones that you could always wear for years to come. They were a really good investment for me and the sweater goes right in there and looks perfect with the silhouette of the skirt. The colors in the sweater are just everything. Now staying with skirts, this is a shorter one, my sporty lounge skirt. You saw it with a zebra print, it goes perfect with this one as well of course. Grey shoes with a comfy heel and a grey bag. This could be an autumn church outfit for me and I'd feel really good. I mentioned church outfits because where I go at least we wear skirts and dresses, we don't go to church with pants. Just as context, the, the fabric, if you could feel it, oh my gosh, you would never take this off. Here are my wide leg pants again and in this case I've got metallic loafers, silver with a silver bag in leather and this could be another comfy plain outfit for me. So comfortable, very warm and I'll tell you more about these pants later on. It's a work in progress, it's a hack <laughs> but they are so drapey and they go with a lot of the tops that I wear and this is no exception. If you could feel the way I feel right now, oh, it's just like wearing pajamas but not looking like I'm wearing pajamas basically. And I mentioned how I feel because that's really important to me. I'm really in tune with the way that clothes make me feel. I keep extending my arms, you'll get sick of me. Here I've got my slim pants. They're not skinny jeans. I've got some basic clothes shoes for winter. I tend to wear different size bags, just depends on where I'm going. And this bag is huge because it would carry a water bottle and like a lot of things. It's very basic. Just grab these, throw them on, and I'm set to walk out of the house. I could have looked for more styling options, but yeah, I've done a lot today. <laughs> Here is my second version of the Donny, this time in pink. This is a linen rayon blend, a little more structured than the blue one and I have a hack where the front is fully opened. Navy pink is a really nice combination of colors in my opinion. These are my wide leg carrier pants from each to stitch. I have a navy cami underneath and I have a non-permanent solution there to close it up in the center if I want to. It's like a hook and eye with pins that you can remove if I want to close it up there. This is the same length, the same gathers at the back, the yoke the collar everything is just the same it's just that the facing is extended I have a little less top stitching on this one just to keep it clean I've also done hems by hand you can see the front pin though I'm pinned I could wear that closed or just loose <laughs> whatever and it's just the perfect little light layer in linen perfect for this type of weather you can see it opened whatever I want to do I can remove those pins as well so I love non-permanent solutions like this and I love the combination here with the wide leg pants Here's my Donny shirt hack again, but this time over white. I have a white tank top with my white Allegro pants, and I love the pink and white combination here. Different type of silhouette for the pants, slightly more slim feet, a little bit cropped to show off the pink shoes, silver handbag, <laughs> the pink is just everything. I love those little pins that I found and having the option to wear this either closed or open. I think because this is so bright and pink, just having one color underneath tones the outfit down a little bit, and having this top completely open in the front was something I really wanted to have and I think the drape of this fabric is perfect for it. I know I'm going to be wearing this a lot. This is one of my Sophia sweaters. I made this one with a rayon French terry. It's so so soft. It's grey and it's got some white stripe details. 
in the way it was weaved. I did make this one shorter than the original after having made the original length. I thought it was way too long. And I've got a pair here with white gray booties. If I have an outfit that's mainly solid, as with this one, I like pulling out these bags. I have some sort of design on it, monogram, whatever. I think it adds something to the outfit. I would walk out just like this. This one has a hemband and cuffs on the long sleeves. You can see the hemband makes this hug closer to the hips but not extremely so and I prefer this length right here. The original length was two inches more. I, th I thought that was way too long. The cuffs are really small, that's how they are. Up closer you can see how this was weaved. It's not just a plain solid grey, although from far away it looks grey. This is the more simple type of neckline that overlaps. Easier to sew than the other option and the overlap here is quite nice. It's not super high and it comes close to the chest. I think it's very nice. That's how it looks like on the back, very neat. These two are the areas that you need to be more careful with right there. I think the shoulders fit well. The shoulder seam is right at my shoulder and the sleeves have enough ease. They're not super slim nor super wide, so it's perfect. Grey in general is a pretty boring colour for me. I have very few pieces that are grey in my wardrobe, but I really like this one. I like that the weave of this rayon French terry is not just a plain solid grey. It's got specks of white and black some very faint stripes as well, so it's very, very special. Grey is a color that will go with every single other color. It is a great neutral, so I could wear any types of bottoms, any color. White looks great right now. It could be jeans, it could be black, it could be red, it could be burgundy. I would generally wear this on its own, but if you wanted to wear a jacket on top, it's fine. It's not a bulky type of design. It doesn't have a lot of ease. You could perfectly wear this under a jacket and be okay. It's just that because it's hot here, I would probably just wear it as it is right now, just on its own. Here I've dressed up my Sofia sweater, just a little bit. Same staple pencil skirt that I always wear. I have these amazing gray shoes that are just so comfortable to wear. They do have open areas, good for in-between weather. Matching gray bag and I've got a little silk scarf with black and white just to bring that black from the skirt up to my neck just little things and I think this is good I like this I would totally wear this to church I paired my grey sweater with my green poppy pants. This is one of three or four that I've made. I really like this pattern. It's very comfortable. Flat front elasticated back that fits amazingly. Great slim leg, which I think goes with many styles on the top. I've added a little slit on this one so you can see my shoes. So I've kept these same beautiful grey shoes. Added some other tones of greens here with the silk scarf and the bag. And I really love this look. As I said, grey goes with any color. And I think with green, it looks really good. This is my second Again, Sophia sweater. The sweater knit here is super lightweight, almost sheer. And this time I've got the necktie option, but you'll see that up closer. Black pencil skirt matching accessories. And this is a semi dressed up look that I feel really good in. This has the regular hem just with the tweed needle, same as for the long sleeves, no cuffs on this one. And this one is also shorter than the original length. It is the same tie that I just leave hanging, although I could do a bow if I wanted to. And I like this length on a fitted bottom like this pencil skirt. I think it's good. You can see the neckline a bit more in regards to my chest and the proportion of the neck and the face. And I'll probably wear the tie just loose. If you want to, you could tie it up as well. I think it also looks cute. You can see the modesty panel behind the ties. So this modesty panel is a larger, taller version that gives you more coverage here. And it's what I wanted because this is a more autumn winter piece. I've got a summer version with a smaller modesty panel. It just comes a little lower still, gives you good coverage. I absolutely love the colors on this sweater knit and it's so lightweight, but also warm. Perfect for this neckline detail that has a few layers in a few places. In my opinion, a great match of the fabric to the style and to also have a winter version that's a little warm. So pretty and so different to a typical sweater because of the neckline. Here I pulled out the burgundy on the print of the sweater knit and matched it to the bottoms, matched the shoes as well and there is a bit of grey in this sweater knit so I've pulled out a grey bag and this is an amazing autumn look for me. I really love the colours. I struck gold when I found this sweater knit because the print is just so me, it's so lovely, so light, perfect for my lifestyle and my weather right here. See I've been styling all my Sofia sweaters with pretty much the same bottoms. I can pretty much put so many outfits together with everything that I already have and I love that. White definitely works here and this is a more sporty look with white sneakers and a white bag. Super comfortable, it's just a win-win all around. I really love this look as well.
So here is my Coda jacket in linen. It's got all the original fit of the original jacket. It's just that I've made it in a slightly different way. I've added extra patch pockets and a vent on the back that you'll see up closer. Lago cargo, I did want these to go together. A closer you can see the length of the jacket is just hitting the mid hip. I achieved this by adding two extra inches to the original pattern just because my height needs this and I do have enough ease to be able to close this up and wear this nicely and comfortably without it being tight or boxy. I did my hem by hand right there. I added my facing and I bound the edges of the facing. I think that looks really neat and I love that pop of blue in there that you can't really see. At the back, you can see my overlap vent that I ended up adding at the last minute. It's super cool. It's got two buttons that are functional, button holes, and I think that's a really nice detail to have on a linen jacket. Here is the top of my jacket. I do have a little scarf underneath, but I think the collar is very neat. I am open to modifying it for a next version I make to make it a little shorter so it finishes above this area right there. But for this time, I'm very happy with this. Remember, I changed the neckline here. It was rounded, now it's not. It goes this way and then straight down 90 degrees. So I was expecting this. This is how it looks like on the back. The original pattern doesn't have a center back seam. Over here, you can see my collar reaches all the way to the edge of the center front here and it's all enclosed inside the facing. It's a really neat finish there with the binding. I really enjoyed doing that. Here you can see my chest patch pocket. I think it's really cool. I would have been really sad if I hadn't had enough fabric to do this detail. I do recommend recognize this is a lot of red going on here and I know a lot of people would not want to be dressed from head to toe in red but I'm one of the exceptions that actually will wear this outfit exactly like it is here at some point when I'm feeling in a sort of mood. I am so satisfied with the results here. It's just exactly like I imagined it to be and it was a very enjoyable process. I love my red jacket in linen, modified coda. It's still the same pattern, just sewn a little differently and with a few extra details. I really enjoyed sewing the details, especially that overlap vent there that came at a later stage. Another look with my red linen coda jacket. I love this. I've got it paired with my pencil skirt made from the Cebu collection patterns seven skirts in that one pattern and this is just the most basic one. I added my own extra flare by making it a lot longer down to my ankles and adding an overlap vent on the front to allow me to walk. It's a functional detail but also pretty and I love it. I love the print here. That is why I incorporated this print into this collection to match with the red. This color combination here with the print and the red jacket makes me really happy. I feel myself 100% in a look like this. Vents on the front. I also have an overlap vent on my jacket. Here is my tailgate. I made this one for myself, even though it's not curvy sizing, I think it still works. I made a size large, blended out to an extra large at the hips. I didn't add the hem band, so mine looks a little shorter because I just used the original length. And I think the feet and the ease is really good. I love the colorful print and I've just got it paired with some stretch velvet joggers, some sneakers, very casual. Here up closer, you can see the ease at the hips. It's really nice. I like the little slit on the side. I added that at a late edition just when I was hemming I undid the size a little bit and opened them up my sleeves are two and a half inches shorter than the original pattern Here you can see the kangaroo pocket well you can barely see it because it's a print but it's very comfortable it's flat it's not bulky and it was really easy to sew up closer you can see the neckline you know you can add a regular crew neckline but I wanted the hood and it overlaps on the front I made myself this drawstring I added this little metal business on the bottom <laughs> just to make it look pretty and I do have a golden grommet right there. My hood is lined, you can do it unlined as well if you want to. Here you can see the shoulder feet, my shoulder is there, this is about three quarters of an inch lower. So it's slightly dropped which matches the shape of the sleeve as well. So I think it's absolutely fine for this type of style. And up higher, you can see the hood on. I think the hood is very well made. It's two piece and it fits really well. It's not humongous, it doesn't have a pointy top. 
it really shapes the head very well. I do actually use hoods. It's not just decorative for me. When I get cold, I actually put the hood on and I love the feeling of that, especially for napping. Here on the side, you might be able to see the bust that I added on. It's very discreet, it's not a huge dot and I think it does improve the feet on the side there. I did that because I know the pattern is drafted for a straighter figure, which I don't have. A little bit of shaping on the side did make a difference for me. I really loved how this turned out. I'm really excited to wear it in real life, both dressed down and dressed up as you will see in the next couple of looks. Here is another fun one. I'm just pairing this with black bottoms right now because it's what goes with it best and I've got a stretch velvet skirt, some combat boots and I'm ready to go. Not too casual, not too formal, just in between and I always dress up my hoodies with skirts anyway so it's good. Believe it or not, I would try to dress this up and go to church with it as well. I just got my black pencil skirt with a long slit in the center front. Love this skirt, some really nice boots and a nice bag. I'd probably add on some type of scarf when I wear it as well. I feel like I was able to dress up this hoodie as well, which I love, love doing that. Love playing around with my garments and making them work for whatever I want. You can see the fit, you can see how it looks like from front and back and I think it's really good. It is a relaxed fit garment, I think it accomplishes that and I think the details make it look really nice. So there you go, you can see it but not actually his face. <laughs> I'm just glad I got some type of footage instead of doing flat lace for you because I find that extremely boring. So yeah, that was my husband. This is my second noon top. This one is the same size and fit as the other one. It's just a different option. This one has a V yoke in the front and the back that you'll see up closer. This has full length sleeves. I've also hemmed them in the same way. It's the same size 16 blended to 18 at the hips. I've got the same sky skirt you saw earlier with my other version. Some booties, a little scarf, a little bag, you know, it's very me. I love the combination of different tones of blue. I think the navy with this tone of blue is gorgeous. Up closer, you can see the ease at the hips. I think sweater knits always tend to stretch out a little bit more than other knit fabrics. They are just loosely woven, so that is why this one might look a little looser than the other one even though I made the exact same size and it's all the same. Move the scarf out of the way so you can see the details. So it's the same pleats, same nice shoulder fit. The fabric shows off the pleats beautifully. We still get this angle right here but it's composed of this different seam here which finishes in a V over there. So that is the front yoke. I don't know if you can see it as well at the back with my hair, but it's the same design at the back. I have the regular height, so this is a little higher than the other version you saw. It's finished with a neck band as well right there. I'm gonna really enjoy this look when I get to wear it out in real life. <laughs> I love making designs that are not conventionally for sweater knits with sweater knits because I get the best sweaters and don't just think that sweaters have to be basic, they can be beautiful like this and this pattern is perfect. You can have a smashing sweater, very beautiful. I love this blue, it feels so soft on and I'm going to really enjoy it when it gets cooler. Here's another look in a blue explosion. These blues are different tones, but that doesn't matter. I think they go beautiful together. This is a Lenox skirt I made using the Lenox dress. I just made it separately into a skirt. This is a pattern from Love Notions and it's an athletic knit. I love the blue. I think they go together really well. I like using maxi skirts with boots and I've got a scarf with a blue print in there just to give it a little bit of life. And I love the way this looks. He 
have my sweater knit noon paired with my metro pull-up jeans it's also a pattern from Sinclair patterns very comfy pull-up stretch jeans this is a lighter wash and I think it pairs beautifully with this tone of blue a very casual look with sneakers and a bag of course I had to bring a little print scarf there to give this outfit a bit of me I feel like if I dress in solids I do need a little print somewhere and it usually comes in the form of a scarf I have a billion of these I love them because I feel it always gives that extra touch it's gonna make me really happy with the look in the end this last Frankie is so nice it's my winter version it's made out of a sweater knit and it's the only one that has long sleeves the feet the size all of it it's the same length as all the rest it's just that here I have a regular hem on the long sleeves I love this color it's like a deep magenta in a pretty light to medium weight sweater knit but still structured enough and I really love the feet and the feel here it's going to be perfect for autumn and winter I've got it paired with a skirt that I really love some blue booties I love that bag it's in the same tone and yeah it was a delight to be able to make a version like this to enjoy when the weather gets cooler the collar and placket are made out of linen in a matching tone of magenta so I was really happy I had a little bit left over from sewing another garment there to match it up with the Frankie love doing that finding little bits left over to use is really nice here is a placket up closer and the collar now I did another sewing technique that totally encloses the seam for this version I really love how that turned out I have that content over on patreon so I'm happy to have four Frankies one for everything I have a dress I have a few tops short sleeves long sleeves you know you can use this style for whatever weather and you can make them all different this magenta color is everything to me I really love it and yeah it'll be a couple of months before it gets cold enough for me to wear it but i'm very happy to have made it Here's my gorgeous Isla trench coat and I'm just gonna style it super simple. I would actually wear it just like this if I wanna dress it up a little. This is my black Fistera dress from Each to Stitch, woven rayon, very comfortable, very nice. And I've decided to use purple to go with the red. I think it's not the typical color combo, but I really love it. So silk scarf always for the win. I just can't get over how beautiful this looks. It's just so pretty. And the plaid inside is really pretty as well. So let's put it on. <laughs> Ta-da, here it is in all its glory. It's so beautiful, it feels so nice on. I'm very happy with the fabric choice because of the color, the way it drapes, and it doesn't feel really heavy on. It's not a lightweight fabric, but it doesn't feel like I put a thousand pounds on myself, which sometimes is the way you feel with these garments. Love the length. Remember, mine is five inches shorter. I think this was meant to be really, really long. Drafted for a tall woman like me, but I didn't want mine that long. Here I have the belts. I don't think I'll ever belt it, but I think it looks good and it looks classic like it should. You have buttons on both sides but there's only button holes here that you overlap a little to close up to here and if I were to ever button this up I don't think I'd do the top button. I just start from the second one downwards and there we have it buttoned up. Initially I thought these pockets were low but they're actually fine at least for my arms. That's how it looks like on the back. You can see the cape. Very simple and then there's a vent there for walking. But let's be honest, am I ever gonna wear it tied up like this? I don't think so. I'm always gonna wear it open. This is how the plaid lining looks like inside. I think it looks really cool. Initially, I wanted that red lining, but it wasn't very good quality. It wasn't gonna work out and give my jacket longevity. So I'm glad I changed it. it although it took me an extra couple of hours, I'm happy. Here's a closer look at the pocket. It's lowish, but perfect for the length of my arms. Maybe if you're a little shorter, you might want to think about maybe raising that mark there and just sewing them a little higher. It won't make any difference to the technique. There are the belt loops and the button. It gives the waist a little bit of shaping, even though I don't tie it up all the time. I could also just wear it like that, tied up at the back. I've seen that happen a lot and that's nice as well. There's the large facing, it's quite wide, and the lining in there, very nice and neat. Here's the detail at the bottom of the sleeve. We have a strap and a loop little buttonhole and button over there 
very nice love that it was not hard to sew although this seam here can get a bit bulky it's not too bad you can see how this looks like in relation to my face and it's so nice the collar stand and collar all of this unit took a whole day of my planning to sew lots of nice details you need accurate sewing which takes a little longer and it's pretty at the back you can see how i try to lift up the collar so you can see the strap and the loops on the back they're covered no one's ever going to see them it did take quite a while i think if you wanted to skip this detail you absolutely could but if you wanted to add it on just know that it's going to take a while <laughs> but it's not hard it's not hard at all it's just extra tight i really love the proportions here the how big the collar is how big this lapel is i think they're really proportional i love it and the shoulder fit is perfect this is the size i sewed according to my measurements i wouldn't want to size up or size down i think it's absolutely perfect so if you just choose your size based on what the pattern recommends you'll be absolutely fine <laughs> here are some details at the top you can see that the collar has a collar stand there the lapel is nice and round, nice and wide. And underneath we have a strap with some loops in there that no one can see. And you know, in essence, this is meant to be functional so you could close this up. But why would I do that? There's two buttons there and a button hole. I think it looks super pretty, but I'll never use it. It was easier to sew the facing in and have all this finished the top stitching without the lining being sewn on, for sure. Sewing on the lining after this was done was easier in this case. And here you can see the cape. It's quite small. It doesn't really affect the bust fit, I find, at all. And on this one, I did use the poly satin lining jacquard type fabric. I think that's appropriate. I wouldn't have wanted something contrasting here at all. And very discreet, there is a bust that, that I'm very happy is there. I didn't need to change its location or anything. And I think the shoulder fit is perfect. There are small shoulder pads in there and I think you do need them, don't skip them because it just really helps with the structure and the fit here. That's how the cape looks like in the back. Very, very pretty, really like it. Different. I'm so happy I was able to make this. I think it's really worth your time to try a project like this. That's not hard at all, it just takes a little longer. I didn't find any of the techniques hard. You just need patience and just go ticking them along and you'll end up with an amazing trench like this absolutely worth your time making because these garments could be quite expensive and you could make yours however you want it to be i would definitely make another one i know if i make this a second time it would take probably a third of the time because i already know what to do and i wouldn't have to film it so yeah amazing love it I think this is an amazing pattern, it's really good. Here is my Selma top from Sinclair Patterns in size 16. This is my version for cooler weather. I made it in a sweater knit. I chose the shorter length available here. You can make it longer or even a tunic length if you want. I've also chosen the long sleeves, just a regular hem. I've made the toe file and it fits me perfectly. I really like the length proportions here for me. I got it paired with a green linen skirt here just for a bit of a monochromatic look. I like the green and tan look here. And you can see it's a very wearable piece. It's got beautiful details and it's just very comfortable to wear. I feel that even though there is more ease at the hips because it's nicely fitted at the chest and the bust makes it look great and not boxy at all. I feel really, really good with the amount of ease at the waist and the hips here. Love it. Up closer, you can see that this reaches my mid hip, which is usually where I want most of my tops to be. Up closer, you can see the five pleats in the center, just below the neckline. Very pretty. I think it gives amazing shape to the bust while giving you that ease at the waist and hips that we always love. And up higher, you can see the neckline in more detail in relation to my face. I don't think this scoop neckline is too low. I think it's perfectly fine. It lies really flat. This is not a neckband. This is a rounded neckline with two layers. The outer layer is interfaced, inner layer is not. Very easy to put together. I, out of the two versions, this one would be easier to sew than the one with the square neckline. And you know what I mean? These are the garments we want to wear on any day because you know you're going to feel comfortable and you're going to be able to live your life and not worry about anything. So I'm all for designs like this love it i think it's really cute i love having sweaters that are not your typical sweater love how it looks in the front and the back it's very neat and it was a really fun sew here is a different look using my winter version of the selma i've always loved these two tones of green and pink together comparing to the monochromatic look i think this one looks happier 
<laughs> it, they're both nice, it's just different vibes. Little colorful scarf always puts me into the picture because I always love a good colorful scarf. <laughs> These are linen pants, cargo pants, goes perfect with this type of sweater as well, which is a style that you could dress up or dress down, do whatever you want. I'm going all green here with the accessories because I don't really have any in this tone of pink, so I think this is okay. This is my Pika vest from Wardrobe by Me, size 18, actually zero fitting adjustments here and I made mine in a really nice soft wool blend suiting material. Burgundy dark red color and I've got it paired with a pair of rayon wide leg pants. I love something that's semi fitted and shorter over something wider like these bottoms. I think it looks really cute and I have a tight cami underneath. I'm very happy with the fit, the classic look, longer in the front with the points. Those well pockets that you see there are fake. The lining inside is very pretty, it's a cotton lawn. The shaping is phenomenal. There are waist studs on the back and I'm just so happy to have this piece. The fabric has a texture. It's just so, so amazing. The work pockets are just for show, as I said, they're just decoration, not real. And everything fits really well. I'm really happy with the proportions here of the length at the back and the front. Here you can see the fit of the princess seam is really, really good. And the armhole has good cover. You know, this gum is meant to be worn over things usually, but I know I'm gonna be wearing it like a sleeveless something. <laughs> There it is all buttoned up, although I would not wear it all buttoned up with a cami underneath, it's, I just think it's too much bulk. I would probably wear it buttoned up only if I was wearing a bra underneath, we'll, you'll see that option in a second. I really enjoyed making it, fun techniques, beautiful, beautiful results, facings and the lining inside keep everything neat. And let's see more look. Here I have an almost monochromatic look, a little bit more dressed up with a pencil skirt in a stretch scuba suede. Very similar colors here with the same black cami underneath. Here you can see it worn open and I love it dressed up like this. It's absolutely my jam. I was wearing this exact type of outfit when I was a teenager so it brings me back. <laughs> and in the next little clip you'll see the same outfit but without the cami and the vest fully buttoned up so you can see what the fit is there. What you see on the neckline is actually a sports bra that I have that has a higher neckline so I'm happy to wear it like that because I'm not showing any cleavage and it just looks like I'm wearing a cami underneath but I'm actually just wearing a really good sports bra that has no lace, nothing like that. So very good, I'm happy with everything. The princess seems fit amazing. I'm very happy with the fit everywhere. Now let's make it a little more sporty. I've got a neat skirt, pull up, very comfortable. I have some really cool Adidas sneakers that sort of match the color. And I would be very happy to spend the whole day like this being very comfortable. Again, the vest worn as a single layer, just my sports bra underneath and that's it. The fabric is a mix of wool and rayon and polyester. And believe it or not, it's not that hot to wear at all. It feels nice. I think it would be okay for spring or autumn for me and I would be very happy to just wear it on its own like this and not feel hot. Of course I could wear something long sleeve underneath but this is the look that I'm going for here, sporty, casual, fun and fresh. In the next clip you'll see it styled more wintry. Here I've got a long pencil skirt made in a neat stretch velvet type corduroy with a slit and a turtleneck fully handmade every single piece here. I have some boots that I bought in New Zealand so many years ago, such good quality. They're still going strong in that same type of dark red burgundy wine color. And I love this winter look. This is a look for me this year that I've started wearing long skirts again. And I think the Pika vest fits perfectly here as a really cool layering piece that just makes the outfit a little more interesting and gives you just enough warmth just a little bit and also makes the outfit look amazing love the, the color combination here and all of these garments put together i can't tell you how much i love this vest it's so pretty this is my andy's jacket from each to stitch this is a size 14 with a c cup and then blend it out to a 16 at the hips. The fabric is very unusual. It is not soft shell, which is the recommended fabric, but it sort of behaves like it. Same weight, same hand. This is a double knit, very stable. And up closer, you'll see it has some texture. It's very unusual. It's a mystery knit. I don't really know what the composition is, but I felt it was really appropriate for this jacket. Sort of mid thigh length, longer in the back with a curved hem. I've got it open here 
And on one of the seams in the front, we have these amazing zipper pockets. It's unlined. This is a winter look for me with a long black knit skirt and boots. Fun little scarf and a little matching bag. Here is a closer look. Longer curved hem. The hems inside are finished with a facing, so it's super neat. Maybe you can see it in there. It's the same fabric, same color, it's interface. And we have a long zipper here in the center. This is a different princess seam. It comes from here and then it curves out to the side seam there. And on this seam is where we have the zipper pocket, which is super fun to sew and not hard at all. Very neat. Look at my pocket lining fabric. <laughs> it's really cool. That's how it looks like on the inside. Remember, this is unlined, so whatever lining you use, you need to like. When I turn, you'll see it zipped up. Shaping is really good with all the pieces we have here. The princess seams are amazing, and I think the ease is just right. It's not too much, it's not too little for a layer underneath. I just have a light layer underneath. That's how it looks up closer. Princess seams comes from the shoulder and then curves over here into that seam. At the back, we have several seams as well that incorporate a dart, so the shaping is amazing. This is a closer look at the top area. Here is the princess seam, it comes from here, and this is a C cup curve right there. I think the fit is perfect. All I did for my own fitting was drop the curve by one inch, just lower the apex. Shoulder fit is good, sleeves, the length is perfect. At the back, I'm gonna lift the hood so you can see the seams. Lots of seams at the back, really pretty, all edge stitched great shaping at the back and over here when you zip this up it includes the top part of the hood right there this is how the top part looks I have the hood not on but I'll put it on <laughs> you zip it up and this includes the hood right there very nice get this hair out of the way that is how the hood looks like on it's really nice and closed here if you want you can put a grommet inside and then have a drawstring this is finished with a facing inside and on the inside of the hood I have that same pretty cotton. That's how that looks. And there's a facing right there that finishes all the edge of the hood. Super easy and it encloses the seam which makes it look super neat. I'm wearing the jacket closed so you can see how it fits closed, all the shaping, all of that. I think it's amazing. But as usual, I would probably always wear this open because it's just more comfortable that way. <laughs> There's more options for styling as well. You can actually see what I'm wearing underneath. So I kept it simple this time with just black things underneath. So you can see the actual jacket. I think it's amazing. If you can find soft shell, go for it. I am the one that will never find it over here in Brazil. So I think this was a great little alternative. <laughs> This is a more casual look with jeans and just a navy cami underneath, a colorful scarf and a navy bag. I like purple and navy together. The same as I like purple and green together as you saw before. <laughs> I really love purple and I think it can go with a lot of colors. So this is just more laid back. As usual, I would wear it open and just enjoy the jacket. I can't wait to wear it next year when it gets cold. <laughs> This is my second rosy cardigan from Sinclair Pattern, size 16, tall file. In this case, I made a sneaky sleeveless version. It's not an official option, but I just made mine sleeveless. And the main difference with the other one is that this one has a curved center front shape. All of this is finished with binding all the way around, including the hem, the center front curve, and the neckline. So it's a little different, but it's cut from the same pattern pieces. And I love it in this navy rib knit. I love this New Yorker dress in athletic knit. It's also from Sinclair Patterns. The New Yorker dress has a beautiful feature in the center at the waist or sort of below the bust and the shape of the cardigan at the front as it opens out a little bit really allows you to see the detail there so I think this is a great pairing this is the same rounded neckline as the black one it's got the same type of binding button and loop here same type of finish I used the original armhole of the cardigan that would have a sleeve and just bound it I have so many dresses with navy backgrounds it's one of my favorite backgrounds you know black or navy so I know this cardigan is going to go a long way and I love how simple it is 
Sleeveless is gonna really work for me because I love sleeveless little layers I can put on top. Here is my rosy cardigan again, this time with wide leg pants made out of rayon linen blend. A colorful singlet underneath just to contrast a little and make it not so monochromatic. I do like monochromatic but I also enjoy a little bit of print and color in here. And the tank I have underneath is super cute. I really love this casual outfit, it's really comfortable as well. I have a colorful tank tucked in just to highlight the waist a little bit just because I'm wearing layers. I like to do that sometimes. You had already seen my modified Betty dress with my black cardigan. It has a bit of navy blue in there. I think I can pull it off with my second version as well. This this navy cardigan goes over this dress beautifully it just brings out the blue in the print and I'm also trying to bring out more blue by keeping the shoes and the bag also in the same navy this is also a fit and flare dress I think this type of cardigan that's a little shorter has a curved front can really work here this is my first rosy cardigan from Sinclair patterns this is a size 16 with a toe file this is the one that has a straight front sort of a rectangle center front with facings inside I have long sleeves here neckline has binding with a little button and loop but you'll see those details up close I love it over wide leg pants with a cami this look is just totally me there is a shorter length available then this is the hip level and then there's a lower one so you can choose what length your cardigan is different way to finish the center front and the hem I thought it was really cool with the facings super neat with the mitered corners inside I really like the depth of this neckline and I think it looks good with a cami like this it shows my chest a little bit and if I wore a turtleneck or something with a high neckline the cardigan would look good as well the shoulder fit the sleeve fit it's all perfect here you can see the neckline it's rounded it's not too low and it's finished with binding you saw how to do that on my channel and on one side it finishes right at the edge that's where the button is and on the other side there's a loop there's also an option of making the ties longer and then you have longer ties that you tie up in a bow but I prefer this one I think it's so clean it's a real basic I know I'm gonna wear this a lot <laughs> black is gonna go with everything and I was really missing a basic cardigan like this I love that single closure I love how streamlined it looks and it's bulk free it can go over anything I love it I know I'm gonna be taking this wherever I go it's small enough to fit in a large bag if I want to have backup in you know freezing air conditioned area <laughs> and it's just great it's just such an easy make and it's a basic I know I'm gonna wear a lot this type of cardigan can go over any of my dresses fit and flare especially I think it's perfect because it's not bulky and as the dress has a little bit more volume the cardigan can just go on top without poofing out like other longer cardigans would this basic is just so great I know I'm gonna be putting it on over a lot of my dresses this one here is the Claudia dress also from Sinclair patterns so an athletic knit and I love it with the cardigan What I have here is one of my favorite dresses. It's the Betty dress from Sinclair Patterns. It does have a hack on the skirt that gives it a bit more volume, but the shape, the tulip shape on one side and the bodice, it's all the same. This is a feet and flare dress and I have my black cardigan here. Because the background is black, I'm just keeping it all black with the accessories here, but later on you're gonna see that I'm also gonna style this dress with my navy cardigan and I'll just do it a little bit different there. Love the look here. As I said, this is gonna be a staple and it's gonna go over so many of my dresses really well. You'll see in this roundup that I am a serial pattern repeater. I like sewing patterns a few times. You know, it takes a while to study the pattern, to put it all together, to do the fitting, all of that. I'm just not physically or mentally able to do all that work for just one piece. So if I'm really happy, I'll, I'll probably make two or three even more from the same pattern because then the consecutive times are just relaxing. You don't have to worry about all the initial work. You just make it, wear it, and it's like an easy win. I hope that was fun to watch. There are three more episodes coming in this little roundup series and you'll see them scattered about before the end of the 31st. You have them all here so you can enjoy. See you soon. Bye.